Okay, good morning everyone. So, we are now with our topic 3, plant preparation for annual and perennial crops. So, land preparation is a single most labor-intensive. So, please take note of the most labor-intensive and most expensive activity in crop production. So, um... Mga nakapa-involve in land preparation is cutting of the soil, okay? breaking up the soil into small clods on into sm or into smaller particles and leveling of the field. So, di ba, pag nagpe-prepare tayo ng land for our, for our crop production, so we are, the, the big parcel of the land is being cut or being break down into pieces so that the soil will will have a fine tilt for the easy anchorage of the roots of the plants for their better absorption and growth. So what are the benefits of land preparation? So the benefits, benefits of land preparation includes giving the soil a fine tilt or the fine texture to increase the absorption of nutrients control of the pests so for example in the field we have their uh, weeds or insect pests or diseases that might have been residing there if the land is well prepared okay, especially for the weeds okay, we are controlling the build up of these uh, organisms and prevent them from causing economic damage so increasing soil porosity and aeration. So when we prepare the soil, we are increasing the pore spaces that are filled up with air. So it is very important for the plant para makahinga rin sila. No? Kailangan uh, may porosity or may aeration doon sa ating lupa. Increase soil porosity. Next, incorporates crop residues and other inputs such as fertilizers. So there are instances that the crop residues or yung mga uh, pinag-anihang parte ng halaman, for example, uh, mga debris, mga plant debris, yung kalalang mga dahon, mga tangkay, okay? uh, it can be incorporated in the soil during the land preparation and application of inputs such as fertilizers for basal application of fertilizer. Another is mixing the soil. Okay, so if we mix the soil, the leach deposits, when we, when we say leach, it means that the nutrients are being uh, transported into the lower portion of the soil that cannot be absorbed by the plant. So if it will be mixed, no, the, it, can, it can go uh, at the surface level of the area so that the plants can easily absorb the nutrients that were leached. Uh, another is land preparation levels the field. So leveling of the field is very important for the proper distribution of especially water during irrigation as well as management of uh, weeds during uh, planting rice. So, la level land is very important. Next, prepare the soil for subsequent farm operation. So, the, the initial cutting of the soil or land preparation is in preparation for other farm operations such as making, uh, making uh, furrows or making beds in our, in our field. Okay, so we have two types of land preparation. So the wetland or the lowland preparation. So in relation to the planting method, we also have two, the, the direct seeding and transplanting. So in the direct seeding, as you can remember, okay, we have dry land direct seeding or Another is the wetland direct seeding. So here in land preparation, okay, the, the preparation of the soil, think of the soil when we say land preparation, how do we prepare the field before we, we will be uh, planting. So we have two, the wetland and the 
the wetland or the lowland and the dryland or the upland. So why wetland uh, is synonymous to lowland inland preparation? It's because um, here in the Philippines, lowland is characterized by uh, planting rice or lowland rice, which is the soil is being submerged to water. So for the dryland or the upland, it can be in the lowland or in the plains or in the kapatagan, but the dryland preparation or upland preparation, it means that the soil is dry or uh, with a minimal amount, amount of water before uh, preparing it. So for the wetland preparation, uh, wet preparation is the most common way of preparing lowland field. In this method, the soil is tilled, so please remember this, the soil is tilled in a saturated or flooded condition. So if we think of wetland, isipin nyo yung ating mga rice field, no? Kasi they are saturated or they are flooded with water. It helps improve weed control and facilitates incorporation of nutrients in the soil. With its nature, wet preparation it has a high water requirement. So, so syempre, if kailangan niya maging submerged into water, meron siyang mataas na requirement sa tubig. So what are the steps in wetland preparation? First is the repair or the construct of the bonds. So bonds or dikes enable the field to hold water. So yung mga bands and yung mga dikes or yung mga canal, no? yung nag enable sa field natin para mag-hold ng water. So this is important especially in areas where water supply is not reliable. So construct dikes no wider and taller than 50 cm by 30 cm bands around the field. So sa pagko-construct natin ng mga dikes o yung ating mga pilapil, no? Kailangan um, taller, okay? It can be taller than 50 cm or kalahating metro, no? And 30 cm, ano yan, 0.3 meter around the field. So, uh, kailangan natin ensure that the bands are well compacted and properly sealed with no cracks, hole, etc. Kasi if if the bands or the dikes or the pilapel have cracks, holes, no, hindi natin mahuhold masyado yung water kasi tatagas sila. So this will minimize water losses through seepage, especially in sloping areas. Adjust the spillway height to 3 to 5 cm to ensure sufficient water storage during rainy or wet season. As you can see here in the picture, Right here, okay, in the picture, so this is the bonds or the dike. So it is um, very sealed, no, properly sealed uh, with minimal cracks. However, as we can see, wala namang seepage. No? So next, next step is to irrigate the field. So after the construction of the dike, we will be irrigating the field 2 to 3 centimeter of water for about three to seven days until it is soft enough and suitable for a requirement to be used. So kapag sa, low, sa wetland, no, uh, two to three centimeter yung taas ng water, ibababad natin doon yung soil for about three to seven days hanggang maging malambot at uh, suitable na para doon sa mga equipment na gagamitin natin. So yung iba... Okay, sa mga walang patubig or walang irrigation, inihintay muna nila na magkaroon ng sufficient amount of water through rainwater bago nila uh, i-conduct yung primary tillage operations. So, the primary tillage operation is normally undertaken when the soil is wet enough to allow the field to be plowed and strong enough to give reasonable level of traction. Yung sakto lang yung uh, tubig at hindi sobrang uh, maputik okay, para uh, makapag-give way din naman sa movement ng equipment at ng tao na magkakandak ng uh, 
primary tillage operations doon sa lupa. So, this can be immediately after harvest, pwede pagkatapos agad, or at the beginning of the next season, depending on the soil mixture and water availability. Ayun yung sinasabi ko kanina, no? hindi kasi lahat ng field, no? hindi lahat ng area, meron silang available na water irrigation facility, or hindi abundant yung water. So, yung iba, uh, af right after ng pagkaani, no? isang linggo lang, uh, uh, follow period, tapos nagkahandak na agad sila na pinaprepare na agad nila ulit yung land. Yung iba naman, naghihintay sila ng, ng enough water okay, bago sila makapagsimula ng uh, kanilang land preparation. So, after that, we will be plowing the field. So, ano yung mga implements? Ito yung mga implements na ginagamit. So, make the first pass along the edges of the field in the clockwise pattern. For the second pass, move counterclockwise and finish at the center. So, sa unang pass, alimbawa, let's draw here. So, for this one, for example, this is our field. Okay? So, yung unang pass daw, sabi, along the edges. Okay? Ito yung passage natin. Along the edges of the field in a clockwise pattern. Sorry, clockwise. Yan, nabura lahat. For example, this is a field. How is clockwise? O yung parang ikot ng, ng relo. O di pa ganyan, di ba? Clockwise. Okay, so sabi, uh, pass along the edges. So for example, ito yung, yung pag-aaraluhan natin. No? Pa-clockwise. Ayan. Pa-clockwise. Sa unang passage yan or unang pass. Okay. And then, sabi, sa second pass, bahin natin ng kulay. Sa second pass, uh, counterclockwise naman. Okay, paano yung counterclockwise? So, kung ito yung clockwise, kabalik tara ng counterclockwise, pag ganyan. Okay, so, dito tayo, uh, magsimula daw tayo ng second pass, move the counterclockwise and finish at the center. So, here naman, ayan, uulitin lang natin yung process. Pa counterclockwise naman yung ating movement. And then, sa gitna tayo matatapos ng ating uh, pag-plowing uh, or pag-aararo. Okay? So, yun. So, primary tillage may also be done through rotary tilling. A power tiller or tractor is used in this operation. Tiller blades or knives completely cut and mix the soil. They also break up and shred plant stubble or weed. Ayan, yung mga plant parts or mga plant debris are being incorporated in the soil, speeding up the decay of plant material. So rotary tilling can be done during primary and secondary tillage of the soil. So this is... Uh, picture of the tillage operation. Next, after that, we will be flooding again the field. So, the field will be submerged for 10 to 14 days after flowering to soften the floods and, de and to decompose organic material. After that, we will perform secondary tillage operation. So, depending on the, the climate and the soil type, the secondary tillage operations should be done 10 to 14 days after primary working. So, after natin ma-submerge sa tubig, okay, yung, yung ating tawag dito, primary, uh, t uh, after primary tillage, isa-submerge natin or if flood natin yung field for 10 to 14 days. And then after that, we will be conducting the secondary tillage. Okay, so... Ano gagawin natin? We will be paddling the field. We will be using the implements such as power tiller, hydro tiller, and rotabator. So, paddling works in soil, in the soil, into a muddy or watertight paste. Yung putik na nakikita natin sa ating rice field, yun yung tinatawag nating paddling, no? Minimix natin, mixing of water into the soil that gives it a uh, muddy uh, consistency. So, this minimizes water loss and increases nutrient retention and availability. 
So after that, we will be harrowing the field two to three times within seven days interval. So implements here includes power tiller attached with a comb to a harrow and rotavator. So harrowing breaks up the soil floods and incorporates weeds into the mud. So this heat send their decomposition. Mas napapabilis yung decomposition if the materials are being incorporated into the soil. So pass the harrow crop crosswise to break the soil pads. So the second pass should be done lengthwise. If the field is flooded, reduce the depth of the water to locate an even and high surfaces of the soil before harrowing. So this is the harrowing or the secondary tillage after the field is being flooded. So the next step is leveling of the field. So primary tillage operation on dry soil, then flood up and paddle the field in the same way as wet tillage. Seeds can be direct seeded or transplanted into a paddle soil. So a well-prepared rice field or uh, rice, kasi uh, ang pinag-usapan natin dito is yung ating uh, tawag dito, primary and staple crop here in the Philippines, which is rice. So it has the following characteristic, mud and water are thoroughly mixed. Tamang-tama yung mixture, yung pagkakahalo ng lupa at ng tubig. Weeds, rice straw, and other stubbles have been plowed under the soil and thoroughly decayed. So kung uh, masasabi natin na maganda or well-prepared yung ating soil for rice planting, kailangan maganda yung mixture ng mud and water. Yung weeds, yung mga ibang debris doon is nabulok na. And na-level na natin yung land, okay? Land is being leveled. So this is the uh, picture of land leveling okay? using a machinery. So a leveled land is very important for rice production so that we can, uh, we can avoid the weeds from establishing and making economic or um, ayan, causing economic damage. So next is the dry land preparation. So the dry preparation is typically practiced for upland rice but can also be done in lowland fields. Not because it's dry preparation or it's called upland, it cannot be done in the lowland fields, right? So dry preparation is also be, can also be done to lowland fields or yung mga uh, nasa kapatagan, hindi lang sa upland. No? In these methods, the soil are not paddled and there is no free standing water in the field. Ang karakteristik ni dry land, hindi katulad ni wetland, wala siyang paddling na nagaganap or walang mixture ng water at saka ng soil and wala rin standing water or walang nakaimbak na water sa field. So, it requires, not like in the wet preparation, it requires less water and is effective for soil, for soil aeration and controlling golden apple snails. So, it also helps to smoothen and firm seed bed, control weeds, and incorporate organic materials and fertilizers into the soil. So, dry preparation is a good option when labor and water are scarce. So this can be used uh, efficiently and effectively when there is a uh, lesser labor and uh, scarce water resource. So dry cultivation can reduce soil fertility and should only be practiced where wetland preparation is not an option. So uh, dry preparation can reduce soil fertility. So first step is the repair and construct of bonds as in the wetland preparation, irrigation of the field as in wetland preparation, and performing of the secondary tillage. So harrow and rototill the field. Okay. Next, leveling the field. Even though walang water na nakasubmerge, hindi nakasubmerge sa water ang ating dry land preparation, it, needs, it also needs to be leveled. So good land leveling is best achieved using 
laser assisted leveling. So, well maintained fields require less laser leveling once every three to four years. Field can also be leveled using a drug packet. So here in the Philippines, um, as a developing country, I don't know if there are already existing uh, laser leveling material here, okay, but the, the farms or the farmers are using locally available materials to uh, manually level. Okay, the field. So a level field in the dryland preparation allows planters or drills to place seed more precisely and enables more uniform irrigation. And sinasabi ko nina, if the field is being leveled, okay, mas maganda at mas, mas magiging maganda yung spacing ng mga seeds na ilalagay and also in uh, implementing irrigation. So, Step five, allow the weeds to emerge before planting. So, uh, parang, uh, ano na tawag dito? Kasi, uh, yung mga seeds natin, meron tayong tinatawag na seed bank sa soil. Okay, weed seed bank. For example, yung mga weeds na nandoon during the fallow period, yung mga seeds nila malalaglag sa soil. So, mas maganda kung patubuin muna natin yun uh, uh, at their vegetative level and then i-incorporate natin sila sa soil o kaya mag-apply tayo ng pre-emergence uh, herbicide pero if it's better if bago tayo mag uh, land preparation no, na incorporate natin yung mga weeds na tumubo sa, sa soil uh, it can also give back nutrients to the soil as uh, green manure okay Yan. Other techniques in dryland preparation, the stale seed bed. Okay, this technique is effective in reducing the weed seed bank in the soil. The field is stilled and level and then weeds are allowed to emerge before being killed by a non-selected herbicide or light cultivation. So, sa so stale seed bed, naayos mo na, na, na harrow mo na, na level mo na, na till mo na yung, yung area or yung field mo and then you will allow yung mga weeds or yung mga damo to emerge and then you will be killing them with a non-selective herbicide or light cultivation to incorporate the weeds in the soil. Reduce tillage. So it is a type of land preparation practice that minimizes soil disturbance by reducing the number of tillage passes. So, reduced, meron pa rin tayong tillage, pero it is minimized. Okay? The, the disturbances uh, done in the soil through harrowing and flooding are being mi minimized. So, this is best for field that has no heavy weed pressure, particularly, particularly for perennial weeds. Bagay ito sa mga areas na kung saan hindi naman gaanong karamihan or hindi naman gaanong uh, matataas yung mga weeds or hindi masyadong infested or infested, populated with weeds. Okay? So with minimal tillage, farmers are able to generate higher yields, reduce production costs because land preparation is one of the major uh, costs of production reduce erosion and other forms of land degradation. And then, zero tillage, the decision to whether or not till the soil. However, pag zero tillage, no, kung saan mo ilalagay yung seed, yun lang yung uh, ititil mo, and the rest, hahayaan mo na sila, no? hindi mo na sila gagalawin. So, sa conservation agriculture, conservation agriculture has three major uh, guiding principles. First is the conservation of the soil. The soil is better according to the claim if it's not uh, cultivated or it's not being plowed or harrowed. So through time, magbibuild up siya ng organic matter tapos meron siya dapat na permanent soil cover para hindi siya exposed sa init makapag-conserve siya ng moisture and dapat yung tatanim mo doon is well diversified. Sorry. <clears throat> Excuse me. Well diversified. So, isa sa mga guiding principle niya is the 
um, minimum soil disturbance or reduced tillage or even better if zero tillage. Okay? According to the uh, advocate of the conservation agriculture. So for rice, so land preparation is important to ensure that rice field is ready for planting. A well-prepared field controls weeds, recycled plant nutrients, and provides soft soil mass for transplanting and the suitable soil surface for direct seeding. Land preparation covers a wide range of practices from zero tillage to minimum tillage, which minimizes soil disturbance through a totally puddled soil, which actually destroy soil structure. Kasi pag napaddled na yung soil mixed with water, wala nang uh, structure. Okay? Soil structure. So it typically involves plowing to till or dug, mix and overturn the soil, harrowing to break the soil clots into smaller mass and incorporating of plant residues and leveling of the field. So generally, it will take three to four weeks to prepare land before planting. So imagine the length of time that needs to for the, that needs for the land to be prepared. That's why it's it's very labor intensive. Okay, so different rice ecosystem have different land preparation requirement. A lowland rice field, for example, are usually paddled to develop hard pan and reduce water loss. Ano itong hard pan na to? So kung mapapansin ninyo, kung, makaka, kung nakalusong na kayo sa mga talukan, di ba? Uh, ano napapansin ninyo? Maputig, okay? Mix yung water and then yung soil. But then, Pag uh, dinig deeper nyo ng kuunti yung paa ninyo, mararamdaman ninyo na meron dong area na kung saan matigas and parang toyo okay? That is the hard pan, okay? Yun yung hard pan. Ang trabaho, uh, nabibuild up yung hard pan through uh, yung, yung mga tillage operations na naganap and also it serves as parang trap, hindi mag-infiltrate yung water para manatiling may water doon sa ating rice field. That is because of the build-up of the, the hard pan during paddling. So, upland rice field, on the other, other hand, do not necessarily have to be paddled. In resource-limiting environment, dry preparation can be adapted. Tulad ang sinasabi natin kanina, uh, rice are, have two growing ecosystems. No, Yung isa sa wetland, yung isa sa dry land. So I hope you have uh, learned something today with our discussion. So thank you very much for listening.